Right, we are recording. So I'm here with awesome. Kazi, who you'll recognize Aww. from Mario Kart Double Dash. Obviously, you're going to say hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, and we're here to play a new game that I've never actually let's play it, a type of game like this before. This is a game book known as Lone Wolf, old book written back in the day by Joe Dever, and it's been converted by some kind person into an interactive game uh, where all the all the random stuff is done for us. Uh, we don't have to do any writing of our own. So, uh, Kazi and I are going to go through all the options and the rules that we're going to be doing before we actually get to the main game. And you can listen to us um, discuss that, or I'll put a time code somewhere for you to skip over if you want to go straight into the book. So, go to the options, video settings, this is all... I think all of this should be fine enough. Uh, this is just like the aesthetics. I don't know if you really care how it looks. The menu buttons or the text buttons. Uh, nah, I don't but that, care. That should be fine. So, if we go to a new campaign, the first book is called Flight from the Dark. And uh, there's many more books to go through. Uh, right now, I've only downloaded the first two. Um, I can install the next lot, um, depending on how this goes. So, set. And now, uh, we're going to do custom rules. So, I think we want to try and make this as enjoyable as possible. And obviously, we want to maybe make it as um, streamlined as well. So, we don't have to keep restarting. We don't have to. So the very first option here, allow saving and loading at any time. I've checked that yes, uh, so we can pause, postpone our campaign whenever we want and reload it at a later point. So here, initial stat methods. This is how our first stats are determined, our combat skill and our endurance. So the regular method in the book is to pick two random numbers. Another method, uh, we can manually distribute up to 10 points uh, to our initial scores. Uh, so we can have combat skill 10, endurance points 20, and a maximum of 7 may be added to any one attribute. So 10 and 20 is standard, you always add them to whatever your die roll is. Now this version, we have 7 points to give between the two. So you can either have a maximum of 17 combat and uh, endurance points 23, or uh, combat, 20, uh, combat 13 and endurance points 27. Uh, so this is a, a bit more regulated, so to speak. There's no randomness involved, but we distribute the points. If that makes any sense. Bear that in mind. It's a it's a choose your own adventure book. Yeah. With, with, with stats and items. Uh, and then there's another one where you can just start off with the following stats of 17 and 23, which is hardcore. I don't think we want that. And finally, start with the following stats, 19 and 29, Prodigy. So this is obviously an easy mode. So I'm thinking the rolling um, should be should be okay. We'll go with random numbers. Even if we get shit results, if we make correct choices, we should be okay to continue. Well, if we get shit results, then this might be a short playthrough. <laughs> we can always redo, and I'll skip ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Different choices. But I think for now... Just, just so the viewers know as well, we're going to be using the regular method, but just so that they're aware that there are these other options, because uh, these weren't available in the original book. Next is the extended combat results table. So when we check this, the extended combat results table, which, I, which aids Lone Wolf in situations where the combat ratio is greater than 11, will be used in determining damage while in combat. Uh, and then when we uncheck it, the regular book table will be used so basically if we check this if our combat ratio is heavily weighted against us it'll give us a little bit of a boost like an underdog boost would you like to have this on or no uh you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna try to find a coin and i'm gonna flip it <laughs> and then we'll just go with whatever the coin flip says unless you got a die or a coin offhand because uh i haven't got anything on Oh God! All right, all right. No, I got, I got an alternative to this. Let me, let me ask a magic eight ball. Fair enough. Let's hear you l loud and clear. Okay. Magic eight ball. 
That don't sound like a magic eight ball to me. It's like you're typing in something. <laughs> I, oh, it's a digital magic eight ball. I don't know where my real one is. All right. Should we choose that option? Apologies Ask. to anyone who's getting frustrated already. <laughs> <laughs> Ask again later. Well. All right. We'll make do without it then. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. All right, okay. next, this is an important rule, the healing discipline. So the strict wording of the book says only damage sustained in combat or combat situations can be healed with the healing discipline. Um, so if we get damage outside of combat, we can't heal it with that special discipline, which is uh, a bit bullshit in my opinion. Um, next up is all damage will be healed by the healing discipline, except for starvation type damage. I think that's a fair one. So, if you don't eat, those points can't be recovered by that healing discipline. But all other kinds of damage can be healed. Or, you can have all damage will be healed by the healing discipline, regardless of how it was, uh, of how it came about. So, my personal opinion is the middle one, where we can heal all types of damage, except for stuff to do with starving. Fair enough. If you're happy with that, I mean, you, you can't you can't like bless yourself out of hunger. Exactly, yeah. So this strict wording of the book, I think, is a bit bullshit, in my opinion. But um, if you guys want to play it in a different way, by all means, you can check this. Said. Okay. So next up is use intelligent damage. This is checked, and it says, when it's checked, damage that lone wolf suffers from combat-related and starvation-related text will be counted as that type of damage. Some damage will be character characterized as other, uh, categorized as other. When unchecked, all damage will be included under the other category. So basically, it's keeping track of what types of damage we've received. And I'm assuming that's going to be uh, important later on. I think we should keep that intelligent damage. Yeah, it sounds like something that... Yeah. Uh, the more automatic, the better, probably. And then intelligent auto heal is a, of a similar vein. When checked, Lone Wolf will not benefit from his healing skills on sections that don't have direct combat per se, but in which either Lone Wolf is involved in a combat related situation or he is injured. It is simply an attempt at greater realism, since by the written rules, there are many times when a section of text doesn't contain combat, but it, make, but it makes no sense for Lone Wolf to heal a point of damage. So maybe for instance he's on the run, so he's not actually in combat, but he's got no time to rest and heal. So this is... Um, that kind of a intelligent auto heal. So when unchecked, Lone Wolf would always use healing skills as long as the section doesn't contain direct combat. If we check it, then in sections where he's not in a situation realistically where he could rest and heal, um, he can't gain that health back. What do you think? Okay. Uh, let's go for realism. Realism. Well, we, okay. we we can't we can't heal while we're running away we're running away we yeah. i mean so if, the, if the text is describing can... a situation where realistically you wouldn't be able to heal then that's what the game is going to do okay okay that's the first lot of rules next is dual wielding when checked this allows a lone wolf to wield one weapon in each hand provided that they're not two-handed weapons this allows lone wolf to claim double weapon skill or mastery bonuses if he is equipped properly so say we have an axe and a sword you think it's okay if we hold both of them? I think that'd be cool. Okay, check it. Next up is weapon rules. Uh, there's regular weapon rules and bonuses as defined in the books. This is a hardcore variation. Um, so, I think I'm going to take precedent on this and say uh, the rules in the book will be sufficient. Here there's a hardcore version where you get less bonuses. And here's the Prodigy version where every single item gets a bonus. So I think it's good the way it is, in my opinion. Yeah, we're not we're not hardcore enough for hardcore. <laughs> Alright, treat shields as wielded on an arm. So when checked, this allows Lone Wolf to wield a shield on his arm, thereby freeing a hand for wielding two-handed weapons or dual wielding. So if we can hold a shield, um, and we can hold a sword, and we can hold an axe. If that makes any sense. So... We're not holding the shield in our hand, we're holding it on our arm. So we could actually still wield a weapon in that shield arm. I think that, that's, that's pretty okay. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Next is weapon skill. Um, so if we have this checked, 
Lone Wolf stacks bonuses from previous series for much higher bonuses in combat. Uh, this one I definitely want to uh, keep on. So when we do the next book, we get to carry forward our skills from this book to the next book. Okay. And then same for this one. Uh, if we've completed a prior book, we can um, increase our powers in the next book. So basically stacking into the next books. What we do in this one, in terms of weapon skills and healing, will carry forwards into the next, which makes sense because it's the same character from this previous book. Yeah, that does make sense. I like that. It's like, it's like playing through a proper game. Yeah. Uh, next is healing starvation with meals. So when we check this, Lone Wolf may eat meals from his backpack at any time in order to heal starvation based damage only. Eating one meal will heal up to three starvation damage points. If we uncheck it, this is how the book goes, uh, like the, uh, the original rules. Lone Wolf can still eat meals from his backpack at any time, but it's only beneficial in sections which he is called upon to eat a meal, in which case, um, if he does not, then he loses endurance points. So essentially what this is saying is, if we check this box, if we were starving like in page one, and in page 50, uh, we've got a chance to heal up that damage, we can heal it right then and there instead of waiting later on to heal up when we're told to eat a meal. But now I think we'll, we'll get away with this. We don't have to check it. Yeah, probably. It, uh, I don't know. It sounds good to me. Okay. To... Uh, if you've got any objection, please let, let me know because, you know, the, you, nah, the is I don't know enough. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> I trust your opinion. And next is allow random number table guiding. When checked, you may use the arrow keys or number pad to guide the area used by the random number table. If you do this, then the result will be picked from a 4x4 grid in the location corresponding to the arrows pressed. You may only press the guiding keys while the random number table is moving onto the screen. So this is a, a very uh, helpful method for getting numbers that you that you want. I think it's it's slightly cheating, in my opinion. So yeah, I agree. I think we should do by the book. Okay. Next up is armor rules. So the book rules. Um, those, that's what is checked right now. Uh, another rule we could have is this variation changes all armor bonuses that would normally apply to endurance to a combat skill bonus instead. So if we have armor, because like normally armor is for combat, isn't it? Um, yeah, but the book says that the armor enhances endurance, which also makes sense. But we can ch we can change it where armor increases combat skill rather than endurance. And then the final mm. option is using this variation: half of the armor bonus that would normally apply to endurance will instead be applied as combat skill. So basically, uh, if the hard I mode, no, no, it's not hard mode. This is actually um, even better. So what happens is we split the armor bonus. So if the armor gives uh, six endurance points, what will, what will happen is we get three endurance points and three combat skill. So it evenly distributes the endurance points and the combat skill because it should, in theory, aid both. But this one entirely is entirely up to you. We can either have all of the endurance points that the armor says, we can change all the endurance points into combat points, or we can share the endurance points with the combat points. Entirely up to you. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for the easy option and go for half and half. Half and half? Okay. So any armor we get, half of the points go towards our combat skill. Next is use generous armor removal method. When we check this, anytime Lone Wolf removes armor, it will only affect his maximum endurance points not his current endurance points. If his current endurance points total uh -huh. is higher than his maximum, then the current endurance points will be reduced to max the maximum. When unchecked, anytime Lone Wolf removes armor, it will lower both his maximum endurance and his current endurance. If his endurance becomes less than one from removing the armor, then his current EP will be set at one. I say check that. Yeah, check that. <laughs> Definitely. So they start the really yeah. important ones. Next is limited only to five disciplines. 
but when we check this, Lone Wolf is limited to a maximum of 5 from the first two book series. Uh, so basically, this is saying we're not allowed to carry forward our skills. We can't gain an additional one next book. So I, I would want to keep that one unchecked. Okay. That sounds good to me. This is basically I want, I want more abilities. Yeah, yeah we, we want to gain more abilities. We want to show like we're progressing. We, we want to be stronger! Yeah. Special item limit method. Lone Wolf is restricted... It's only restricted as to how many special items you can carry according to the instructions in the text for each book. That's the book's rules. Next is Lone Wolf can only carry 12 special items, whether the book text mentions any restrictions or not. Because some items specifically mention that they do not take up any room, it is still possible to carry more than 12. That's hardcore. And finally, Prodigy, he can carry as many special items as he desires, with no limit to the number. Restrictions in regard to wearing types of armor still apply. No wearing two helmets at once. So that's easy mode. Hmm, what do you think? My opinion, we should go by what the book says. Okay. I'm down. And last is provide storage in all books. When checked, Lone Wolf is able to store equipment and money or retrieve previously stored items and money at the beginning of each book before he begins his adventure. There are times when Lone Wolf simply cannot access storage, however, such as at the beginning of book one, which makes sense. Um, yeah. When unchecked, the option for accessing storage depends on the text in the book. So I want to have this checked so that at the beginning of each book, we can go back to our treasure chest with all the previous books, um, items that we've left over, and grab them back. Do, do we still get chances to like check the storage throughout the book? Uh, there are certain books that mention um, that, that have some flavor text that kind of allude to him uh, grabbing stuff from before, but okay. it's not strict. So there are some books that you are not able to do it. I I reckon it's good to. Just like with our uh, disciplines that we can carry forward each book. We should be able to carry all of our items through each book as well. Yeah. Oh, totally agreed. Okay. Um, this is specifically for book six about an archery contest. I'm going to keep these recommended checks as they are. Um, anything to do with bows or quivers or anything like that, they'll help in an archery contest later on. In one of the books so i'm just gonna keep them the recommended and then here when moving from magna kai to grandmaster so magna kai is our first set of books and then grandmaster is the second set uh we want to keep yeah so we get to keep our stuff basically and importing items um Yeah, I want to check this one, relaxed about importing special items. So, before we were talking about going from book to book, now this is talking about going from one series of book to the next series of book. Um, okay. So, I want to, again, keep all our items and, and abilities going forwards. This is assuming we survive this long. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to check that. So, again, this is carrying forward abilities from the previous book. Okay. And that's all the rules. Now, I've accepted. Now go full screen. I'll change the resolutions in, uh, in post. So, the story so far. This is our introduction to the Choose Your Own Adventure. So, the way that we're going to do this, uh, we're going to take it in turns to read each page of the book. So I'm going to begin with the story so far. Okay. So, in the northern land of Somerland, it has been the custom for many centuries to send the children of the warrior lords to the monastery of Kai. There they are taught the skills and disciplines of their noble fathers. The Kai monks are masters of their arts, and the children in their charge love and respect them, in spite of the hardships of their training. But one day when they have finally learnt the secret skills of the Kai, they will return to their homes equipped in mind and body to defend themselves against the constant threat of war from the Dark Lords of the West. I'm gonna try and... Spooky. Yeah. <laughs> the Dark Lords are actually kind of scary when you see the drawings. 
Oh, we get drones oh. in this book. Cool drones. Uh, okay. In olden times, during the age of the Black Moon, Dark Lords waged war on Somerland. The conflict was a long and bitter trial of strength that ended in victory for the Somme lending at the Great Battle of Magengorge. Magengorge. King Ulnar and the allies of Durinor broke the Dark Lord armies at the Pass of Moitura. <laughs> Don't know what these accents are. And forced them back into the bottomless abyss of Magengorge. Vashna, mightiest of the Dark Lords, was slain upon the sword of the King Ulnar called Summer Sword, the Sword of Sun. Since that age, the Dark Lords have vowed vengeance upon Summerland and the House of Ulnar. By the way, feel free at any point to make a comment. Okay, I just didn't want to interrupt. Okay. Not yet, anyways. Now it's the morning of the Feast of Firman, when all the Kai Lords are present at the monastery for the celebrations. Suddenly, a great black cloud comes from out the western skies. So many are the numbers of the, we of the black winged beasts that fill the sky that the sun is completely hidden. The Dark Lords, ancient enemy of the Som Lending, are attacking. The war has begun. Dun, dun, dun. On, this <laughs> on this fateful morning, you, Silent Wolf, the name given to you by the Kai, have been sent to collect firewood in the forest as a punishment for your inattention in class. Lazy boy. <laughs> as you are preparing to return, you see to your horror a vast cloud of black leathery creatures swoop down and engulf the monastery. That's our, that's us in looking at the burning ruins of the monastery. Look at all the crap we're holding. Yeah, it's all the firewood. <laughs> Dropping the wood. Hey, that's good. Like that's a long time to collect. Dropping it full, man. We need it. <laughs> Maybe he put it in a place that he'll just remember later. Yeah. Okay. He's putting it into storage. In the book. We'll come back. We'll <laughs> yeah. make a note of it. We've dropped the wood. We're gonna get it back. Okay, dropping the wood, you race to the battle that has already begun. But in the unnatural dark, you stumble and strike your head on a low tree branch. As you lose consciousness, <laughs> the last thing that you see... So we charge in the battle and save the people, and then we <laughs> slam our head against the fucking tree. Also, you'll notice... We are the, great. The, the story is now shifted to second person, so it's telling us, you, we're Lone Wolf. Or Silent Wolf right now. Uh, we strike our head on a low tree branch. As you lose consciousness, the last thing that you see in the poor light are the walls of the monastery crashing to the ground. Many hours pass before you awake. With tears in your eyes, you now survey the scene of destruction. Raising your face to the clear sky, you swear vengeance on the Dark Lords for the massacre of the Kai Warriors. And with a sudden flash of realization, you know what you must do. You must set off on a perilous journey to the capital city to warn the king of the terrible threat that now faces his people. For you are now the last of the Kai. You are now the Lone Wolf. Dun dun dun. Ba, 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 da, 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 Wait, okay. that was Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> so you you can read this if you want. It's not really story related, so I don't know if you want to do this. This is uh, sure. I'll read it. Okay. You keep a record of your adventure on the action chart during your training as a Kai Lord, you have developed fighting prowess, combat skill, as physical stamina and physical stamina endurance. Before you set off on your adventure, you need to measure how effective your training has been. To do this, take a pencil with your... Uh, that's how to do it by the book. We just pick numbers and it just gives us a random number. <laughs> Alright. So, this is, this is going to simulate how you would do it in the book. There'd be a page with this grid on it. And we'd put our pencil and randomly drop it. That's a nine. really good pick. That's an amazing pick. We got a nine. Okay. Uh, carry on. Oh, the first here. number that you pick died from the random number table in this way represents your combat skill. Add 10 to the number you picked and write the total in combat skill section of your action chart. I.e. if the pencil fell on the number four in the random number table, you should write combat skill of 14. When you fight, your combat skill will be pitted against that of your enemy. A high score in this section is therefore very desirable. The second number that you pick from the random number table represents your powers of endurance, your health, basically. Add 20 of this number and write the total in the endurance section of your action chart, i.e. if your pencil fell on number 6, you get 26. So go ahead and pick it. Let's see what we get. Uh, oh! Uh, uh, oh. oh so we're all a fat! That's the worst idea. Okay. We are all offense. 
if you though. are wounded in combat, you will lose endurance points. If at any time your endurance points fall below zero or below, you are dead and the adventure is over. Lost endurance points can be regained during the course of the adventure, but the number of endurance points can never go above the number in which you start your adventure. Damn. If it, it, honestly, I'd preferred it to be a bit more balanced, like five and five, but hopefully with this big combat skill, the endurance points won't matter. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so the Kai disciplines. Over the centuries, the Kai monks have mastered the skills of the warrior. These skills are known as the Kai disciplines, and they're taught to all the Kai lords. You've only learned five of the skills listed below. The choice of which five skills these are is for you to make. As all of the disciplines will be of use to you at some point on your perilous quest, pick your five with care. The correct use of a discipline at the right time can save your life. When you've chosen five disciplines, enter them in the Kai discipline section of your action chart. Alright, so. Camouflage. This discipline enables a Kai Lord to blend in with his surroundings. In the countryside, he can hide undetected amongst trees and rocks and pass close to an enemy without being seen. In a town or city, it enables him to look and sound like the native of that area and help him find shelter or a safe place. Next is Hunting. This, is, this skill ensures a Kai Lord will never starve in the wild. He will always be able to hunt for food for himself except in areas of wasteland and desert. The skill also enables a Kai Lord to, to be able to move stealthily when stalking his prey. So, if we pick hunting, there's no need for a meal when it's tricked to eat. Or we'll probably end up picking that. Yes, definitely. Uh, sex <laughs> sex sense. Sixth sense. Like spider sex sense. sense. Yeah, that, that's the that's a hidden ability you don't know about. <laughs> so the sixth Ooh, sense. Like which spider, book is that in? Uh, Karma Sutra. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. So I hear that's a pretty good book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the sixth sense. This skill may warn Kai Lord of imminent danger. It may also reveal the true purpose of a stranger or strange object encountered in your adventure. So, spider sense. Tracking. This skill enables a Kai Lord to make the correct choice of a path in the wild, to discover the location of a person or object in a town or city, and to read the secrets of footprints or tracks. Healing. This discipline can be used to restore endurance points lost in combat. If you possess this skill, you may restore one endurance point to your total for every numbered section of the book you pass through in which you are not involved in combat. Remember that your endurance cannot rise above its original level. Next is weapon skill. Upon entering the Kai Monastery, each initiate is taught to master one type of weapon. If weapon skill is to be one of your Kai disciplines, pick a number in the usual way from the random number table, and then find the corresponding weapon from the list below. This is the weapon in which you have skill. So when you enter combat carrying this weapon, you add two points to your combat skill. The fact that you are skilled with a weapon does not mean you set out on the adventure carrying that particular weapon. However, you will have opportunities to acquire weapons in the course of your adventures. If you pick the axe, you are lucky enough to be skilled in the one weapon Lone Wolf is carrying from the start of the adventure. So if we do do this, we're going to have to randomly pick a number, and we can see here we have a dagger, spear, mace, short sword, warhammer, sword, axe, another sword, quarter staff, and broadsword. So they're you making that's it... How they... Do you think that's how they do it in the monastery when they get like new recruits? They're like, here, roll this die, and then you'll see what we'll train you in. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually not a bad idea <laughs> anyway so they put the sword here twice so you're most likely to get this uh with a roll next is mind shield the dark lords and many of the evil creatures in their command have the ability to attack you using their mind force the kai discipline mind shield prevents you from losing endurance points when subjected to this form of attack mind blast is the offensive version where we can attack using the force of our mind it can be used at the same time as normal combat weapons and adds two extra points to combat skill. Not all creatures encountered on the adventure can be harmed by Mind Blast. You'll be told if a creature is immune. Next now, is, is that like an extra action or is that just like added to your attack? It's just an extra combat skill. So you get two extra combat skill points if the enemy is, vul is vulnerable to Mind Blast. If they're not, then you don't okay. get the extra bonus. Okay. Next is Animal Kinship. This skill enables a Kai Lord to communicate with some animals and to be able to guess the intentions of others. And last is Mind Over Matter, which is like telekinesis. Mastery of this discipline enables a Kai Lord to move small objects with his powers of concentration. So, there's five to choose from. I'll pick first, you pick next, and we'll go in turn like that. So the first one okay. I want to pick, obvious one, is Hunting. Okay, I'm gonna go for Six Cents, because that sounds fun. Okay, I'm gonna go for Healing. Oh, definitely weapon skill. All right, tell me when to press. We are all offense. Oh, just press it. 
What do we get? We get another zero. We get dagger. Okay. We are a high offensive thief. And I will go with... You know what? We've or got no endurance assassin. points. I want mind blast. Okay. I just want to increase our combat think... skill. Uh, yeah, I was I'm thinking really mind worried. blast too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was thinking mind blast too. Just go all offense. We are going full assassin. Dual wielding daggers and... And sensing things, we, we are going full assassin. Oh shit, if we do have double daggers, I think we get double the weapon skill. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't recommend doing that for a reason that I'll mention later. But anyway, if you okay. successfully complete the mission as set in book one of Lone Wolf, you may add a further Kai display of your choice to the action chart in book two. This additional skill, together with your five other skills and any special items you picked up in book one, may be then used in the next adventure of the Lone Wolf series, which is called Fire on the Water. Right, this page is yours. You are dressed in a green tunic and Lovely. cloak of a Kai. I was about to say, like, but <laughs> and the cloak of a Kai initiate. You have little with you to arm yourself for survival. All you possess is an axe. Note under weapons on your action chart and a backpack containing one meal. Note under meals on your action chart. Hanging from your west, west waist is a leather pouch containing gold crowns. The gold. Find out how many. Pick a random number. So go ahead and yeah, pick it. Let's see how much we get. Six. All right, more than half. Decent. Uh, this number equals the number of gold crowns you possess at the start of the adventure. Note the number in belt pouch section of the action chart. So uh, you said you uh, just oh god. I've, I've gone to the action chart here so normally when like I, it wasn't like this before because I, I was in the table of contents but if we have the action chart open whenever we press a button to great to gain something it automatically should appear over here so you can see in real time when we get something or lose something okay you discover amongst the smoking ruins of the monastery a map of Summerlin. note under special items in the action chart Showing the capital city of Holmgard and the land of Durenor far to the east, you place the map inside your tunic for safety. You also find one of the following. A sword, a helmet, two meals, or chainmail waistcoat, which is apparently the awesome thing. Yep. Or mace, or some healing potions, or a quarterstaff, or a spear, or some money, or a broadsword. To discover what you find above, you must pick a number. Three. Two meals. Two meals. That's useless oh, for all yeah. time. <laughs> well, maybe we'll we'll be in a wasteland or something. Maybe we'll, oh, just, shit. we'll just keep. Not a great start. Also, I'm just going to quickly show the map of Summerland. So, the monastery is over here. And we need to get to Hamadel, I think. So we're going to have to t go through this p path, maybe, around the mountain. That's the quickest way oh, if we follow the coast. we got to go through a desert right in the middle, yeah. too. Wildlife so. in the center as well. So you know there's going to be enemies there. Okay. How to carry equip- Or, yeah, how to carry equipment. Now that you have your equipment, following list shows you how it is carried. You don't need to make notes, but you can refer back to this list in the course of your adventure. Sword carried in one hand. Helmet worn on head. <laughs> yeah <laughs> duh food placed in backpack or in mouth chainmail waistcoat worn on body mace carried in hand healing potion carried in backpack quarterstaff carried in hand spear hand gold crowns belt pouch broadsword hand so we put the weapons in our hand and everything else goes in the bag pretty much pretty much pretty much um it's a little blurry. The maximum number of weapons that you could carry is two. These must be stored in your backpack because space is limited and you may only keep a maximum of eight articles, including meals in your backpack at any one time. So we have, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't gain anything for that. <laughs> uh so yeah we we have three meals so it's taking up three slots um 
Special items are not carried in the backpack. When you discover special item, you will be told how to carry it. Gold crowns always carried in the belt pouch. It will hold a maximum of 50. So our wallet is 50. Food is carried in your backpack. Each meal counts as one item. Any item that may be of use can be picked up on your adventure and enter on your and entered on your action chart. It's given special cap or is given bleh, I can read capital <laughs> letters in the text. Unless you are told it is a special item, carry it in your backpack. How okay. to use your equipment. This is pretty much the Actually this is important. Read the weapons bit only. The rest of them. Okay. Weapons aid you in combat. No. I don't believe that. Uh, if you have a Kai discipline of weapon skill and the correct weapon, it adds two points to your combat skill. If you enter a combat with no weapons, deduct four points from your combat skill and fight with your bare hands. <laughs> if you find a weapon during the adventure, you may pick it up and use it. Remember, you can only carry two weapons at once. Okay, so backpack items, we can change them at any point when we're not in combat. Special items, um, they have a particular purpose or effect, we're told. Gold crowns is just the currency. It's a small gold coin. Uh, we can carry 50 maximum. Food, when we're told to eat, we have to eat. Or if we have hunting, we don't need to. And a healing potion can restore four endurance points when swallowed after combat. Only enough for one dose. Okay, that's enough of that. Yeah. So, rules for combat. There are occasions on your adventure when you have to fight an enemy. The enemy's combat skill and endurance points are given in the text. Lone Wolf's aim in the combat is to kill the enemy by reducing his endurance points to zero while losing as few endurance points as possible himself. At the start of combat, enter Lone Wolf and enemies' endurance points in the appropriate boxes on the combat record section of your action chart. The sequence for combat is as, as, as follows. Add any extra points gained through your Kai Disciplines. So, we our with uh, Kai Disciplines is 21. Uh, to the to your current combat skill total. Subtract the combat skill of your enemy from the total. This results in your combat ratio. So if Lone Wolf had 15 combat skill and is ambushed by Winged Devil with 20, he's not given the opportunity to evade, so he has to fight. Um, Lone Wolf has Mind Blast, so he adds 2, giving him 17. 17 minus 20 is minus 3. So that's a bad ratio to have. Because so, um, negative numbers, obviously. When you have the combat ratio, you pick a number from the random number table. And then there's a combat results table which refers to what number you've got. So, if for example, uh, combat ratio is minus three and the random number is six, then a particular section on that chart, you'll see it when we actually do the combat. It says how much Lone Wolf loses, which is three, and Winged Devil will six. And then we just keep exchanging, keep going through the rounds of combat like that until someone's endurance points reaches zero. Now. Does, does that mean that we will be repeatedly taking three damage in that instance, like every round? No, no, no. So every round we keep picking a number from the top random number table, and then that determines how much is lost that particular round. Okay. So if we kept picking six every single time, then we do three, six, three, three. But obviously, you'll, you'll get a variation of numbers and therefore different results. Okay. So uh, you continue this process of combat until either us or the enemy is reduced to zero. Obviously, if we're reduced to zero, the Lone Wolf is dead and the adventure is over. Um, so, evasion of combat can happen sometimes as well. So, during the adventure, we can be given a chance to evade. If you've already engaged in a round of combat and then decide to evade, you calculate combat for that round in the usual manner, but only um, that you lose the points. The enemy doesn't lose any points. So, that's the risk of running away. And you can only run away if the text says that you can. This is you. Levels of Kai training. The following table is a guide to the rank and titles that are bestowed upon Kai lords at each stage of their training. As you successfully complete each adventure in the Lone Wolf series, you will gain an additional Kai discipline and gradually progress towards the mastery of 10 basic Kai disciplines. So we go from novice. Well, we start out as initiate, but we we were a novice. Into it. Yeah. What is that word? Okay. okay. Don. Alkalite. Now we're initiate, and uh, hopefully we'll grow into an aspirant, a guardian, a warman, or journeyman, a savant, or a master. So by the end Beyond of this the book series, we should be a master. Okay. Beyond the 10 basic skills of the Kai Master await the secrets of the higher Kai disciplines. 
or Magnakai. By acquiring the wisdom of the Magnakai, a Kai Lord can progress towards the ultimate achievement and become a Kai Grand Master. So we can get better and better. Yep. Kai Wisdom. Your mission will be one of great danger, for the Dark Lords and their servants are a cruel and fierce enemy who give and expect no mercy. Use the map to help you steer a correct course for the capital. Make notes as you progress through the story, for they will be of great help in future adventures. Many things that you will find will aid you during the adventure. Some special items will be of use in future Lone Wolf adventures, and others may be red herrings of no real use at all. So be selective in what you decide to keep. There are many routes to the king, but only one involves a minimum of danger. With a wise choice of Kai disciplines and a great deal of courage, any player should be able to complete the mission, no matter how weak their initial combat skill or endurance point score. The honor and memory of the Kai Lords will go with you on your perilous journey. Good luck. Okay, so we're at 40 minutes now. I wonder if we should like make this an entire episode as like a episode zero or a prologue. <laughs> And then next episode, <laughs> we'll actually begin the adventure. Yeah, nice. if that's what you want to do, sure. Yeah. But it'll probably be a double upload anyway. So I will see you next episode where we actually begin the adventure. So <laughs> make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and all that nonsense. See you later. A, a bunch of learning happened here in yes. this video. All right. Bye-bye.